Okay, we're going to record a short video on chemical elements and water. Actually, we're going to skip the water part. The water is going to come into a second video, but you should be able to recognize this molecule down here as a glucose molecule. If viewed from another angle, it might look like a hexagon, so it'll be really exciting. You should look at that. So really quickly, make sure that you can remember from some previous science lessons that when you see a molecule like this, you should immediately recognize that as glucose. So see if you can answer a few of these questions here. How many elements are there? How many atoms of carbon are there? What's the total number of atoms? Is this actually considered a molecule? And what is this a molecule of? So see if you can pause and find out the answers. But uh, really briefly, there should be three elements there. Six atoms of carbon, you should be able to identify. The total number of atoms is all of these. Uh, the total number of atoms is 6 plus 12 plus 6. That's going to be 24. And this is indeed considered a molecule. It is also considered a compound because there's more than one element, but it's a molecule because there's more than one atom. For example, O2 would be considered a molecule because it has two atoms, but it would not be considered a compound because there's only one element represented there. And finally, this is a molecule of glucose. Really basic stuff, right? Everybody okay? So let's fly through this really quick. An atom, you should know, one of the smallest units of matter that cannot be broken down. Electrons, protons, and neutrons. Uh, electrons are negative. These are very, very big news when it comes to biology, understanding how electrons get passed from one place to another. Okay. An element is a pure substance made of only one kind of atom. For now, well, we're going to visit a cafe in a second, but for now, you should be able to recognize what these numbers basically mean. So the atomic number here is 8. It represents the number of protons, which is the same as the number of electrons. O is the element symbol, and we know that this is oxygen. You guys should recognize that. And the atomic mass is represented right here. And usually we round that number up, so that would be an atomic mass of 16. To calculate the number of neutrons, it would be the atomic mass minus the atomic number. And you should be okay with that. And we've talked about if I were to have a son, I would name him Ian or Ion. And it's fantastic. An ion is a charged atom. Uh, we'll cover this in a lot more detail, but just some basics right now. If an atom either loses or gains electrons, it becomes an ion. And ions are very, very important in biological mechanisms. Again, atoms are, in, are uncharged. And for now, if you can associate the word nonpolar with that, and ions are charged, and if you can associate polar with charged, we're going to see this in the water unit and see how that actually works. So here is a sodium atom and if you were to remove an electron it's negatively charged so that's what we call call it a an electron if you take something negative away from something that's neutral well then in order to balance out the charges you get a positive over here so positive plus negative makes neutral and these are both considered uh, this is considered an ion that has lost an electron finally the cafe you should definitely check this one out. It is called C. Hopkins Cafe, and over there they have really, really good salt. Okay, so you can imagine you're sitting here with your friends. That's that's not how you sit on a sofa. Anyways, forget that. C. Hopkins. So why is this cafe really important? Well, it's important because this is not really a real cafe, obviously. Um, but it actually gives you an idea of all the important elements in biology, kind of in order as well. So here we have carbon. Make sure you write these down. So I'm going to go quickly, but write them down. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. These three are super duper important. Then we get P, that is phosphorus. K is potassium, iodine, nitrogen, sulfur, calcium. Fe is iron. And NaCl represents salt, so sodium and chlorine. If you are able to, in general, know how all of these elements are important in biology, you should be doing okay. Now, what you want to do is, after you finish this, this video, try to find out how each of these is important or significant in biology. I'll run through it really quickly right now, but uh, it's not written down, so maybe pause. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen are important in all of the main biological macromolecules, lipids, which are fats, uh, proteins, and carbohydrates all contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Phosphorus is found in DNA. Potassium is important for nerve cells. Iodine 
you get from seaweed and also it's been artificially added to salt. This is important for proper thyroid. Uh, do, do thyroid function, do a Google, Google search for the word goiter, Google image, but beware though, this is what happens when you don't get enough iodine. Nitrogen is found in proteins, uh, several different places, but let's just say proteins. Actually, nitrogen and sulfur, let's say proteins. Calcium is important, important in nerve cell transmission, let's just say nerve cells, but also for teeth and bones. Iron, Fe, for blood, there's no accent there. I just did that to make it fancy for cafe. And finally, sodium and chlorine, you can see this color here. These are both important for, let's say, for now, nerve cell transmission as well. Nerve cell transmission. Okay, enjoy your coffee here in the cafe. And that's a big list of all of them again. I should have just went straight to that. Okay, if you have any questions, post uh, just some basic introduction to a few of the vocabularies, vocabulary words that we'll use throughout the rest of this unit. All right.